One of the methods used for measuring bulk density is the compliant cavity method. This method is designed to measure the bulk density of weak or loose soil material for which the clod or core methods are unsuitable. The method is particularly applicable to the near surface, including fragile tillage zones. It also may find application for deeper zones through sampling on top of horizons exposed in a soil pit. Zones as thin as two centimeters may be measured and the immediate surface need not be disturbed. Bulk density is a very important measurement in soils and can be used to predict the rate at which water moves through the soil, the water holding capacity of the soil, and the air-filled porosity of the soil. We have here a, a, a wheat stubble, two uh, rows of wheat, or at least they were wheat, uh, three or four months, or a couple of months ago. And uh, this device uh, is very simple. It consists of an annulus of sponge, which is placed on the soil. And then a rigid annulus is placed over the, uh, <coughs> the sponge. And though not shown here, you drive in posts uh, and mount this uh, annulus on the, the sponge annulus on the soil surface. The size of the device is dictated by uh, <coughs> uh, agricultural practice. Here you have a, about eight inch uh, rows and so the device is designed so that you uh, <coughs> can then uh, measure between two rows. Uh, uh, it is very important in designing the uh, device to have a scale that both permits you to make measurements of features and uh, yet not lap over at, uh, at two or three interrows so that you, you know what you're uh, actually measuring. This is, uh, it's called a compliant cavity because you actually make a cavity on the soil surface which complies to the irregularities in the soil surface. Here's where we're going to make the actual measurement. We have the uh, sponge annulus with the rigid uh, <coughs> annulus over it already mounted and we're going to uh, put in these uh, threaded rods so we can mount the assembly on the soil surface. There are many ways to do this but one thing you don't want to do is is pound directly on the uh, plastic. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm pressing it down for, so I don't pound the plastic. Then I fit, make sure that the uh, sponge annulus uh, coincides then with the uh, <coughs> opening in the, uh, in, in the rigid annulus. So we're all done. We're all ready to, uh, we've mounted the compliant cavity on the soil surface. And we use uh, tough plastic uh, film. This is about half mil diameter. And we have here a volume of water already uh, <coughs> uh, metered out. It's 500 cc's in a graduated cylinder. And we pour that in to here, into the cavity, and kind of seat it a little bit. Now this is a hook gauge. This is a bar with literally a hook gauge on it, which is just a, a hook that we can use to measure the water level. So we put that uh, in, this, the, in the device, like so if I can get it right. And now we have a situation where the tip of that hook gauge establishes a datum plane <coughs> from which we can get the volume to the soil surface. If we pour water in uh, to exceed the level of the hook gauge. And then I take a uh, 60 cc uh, <coughs> syringe and come in and remove the water until you just see the tip of the hook gauge breaking the surface. 
And then that water goes back in here. So now we have a, a measure of the dead space in the soil. And that uh, volume is 500 cc's, which we started with. Now we have to take the water uh, out of the confined cavity. And uh, you might save it if you uh, hiked in a mile with your water into the woods, or otherwise you might, you might, throw, it, uh, uh, you might throw the water away. Now we're going to excavate uh, to the depth desired. I have a bag here and a lot of different tools depending on what you uh, want to use for excavation. You need knives and spoons and, and uh, you'll soon gain experience as to the tools that are needed for your soil. Now a very important point here and it distinguishes this method from most other methods is that the the depth to which we excavate is not arbitrary it's determined by how the soil feels or the color it's determined by the morphology of the soil a second important point is that we can measure thin zones a centimeter and a half or so much thinner than we can do with the usual core uh, procedure or the clod procedure. Now this is something you don't want to do. You got to remove the soil quantitatively. And we're going to go down about a centimeter and a half and the reason we're going to stop there is because the soil feels firmer down there. So that suggests that there's a Another little bit that I got. I think maybe we'll just take a little more out. You see, if the usual core method, you might press in the core of maybe three inches into the soil, and you may have gone through most of the uh, Im really important changes uh, that have occurred. Whereas with this method, you, you would not. You'd feel the, the differences. Now, the excavation should be a cylinder. It shouldn't be uh, a little uh, soup bowl. It should be a cylinder uh, that is coincident then with the edge of this uh, hole in the rigid plate because we want the, the cross-sectional area of the hole to be constant. So again, try and don't make soup plates, make cylinders and keep the excavation about uh, the diameter of the, uh, uh, of the rigid plate or the hole in the rigid plate. So ordinarily then we would take this uh, uh, back to the office and we would oven dry it. We would make a correction for, for rock fragments, uh, probably, if there were. And then we'd have the weight. And to get the volume for the bulk density, which again is the ratio of the weight, the oven dry weight, to the, to the volume, we make a second measurement here of that volume. The same way as for the first, and we use a thousand cc graduate usually because uh, the more water is involved and here we're filling that graduate with the or the hole with the water from the thousand cc graduate we put the hook gauge across you remember i said that this is a datum plane and it, it, the uh, apparatus is so set up that you have to put the hook gauge in the same place uh, each time. So what you're doing then is measuring the volume twice and the difference between the second volume and the initial volume, which is the volume of the dead space, is the volume that you've excavated. And I'm going to go over here. Well, I have to add a little more water. And 
I'm gonna go over here and take this uh, out and measure it. And we started with a thousand uh, cc, and we ended up with 280 cc's. So we have a, a net volume then of 720 cc's. And from that, we have to subtract the dead space, which was uh, 400 uh, cc's. So we have a net uh, volume of the whole of 320 cc's. Another method used to collect bulk density measurements is the core method. The method demonstrated is a variation of other core